and this is the Attic Insulation and Ventilation section of the InterNACHI Home Inspection Standards of Practice course. And again, this is a supplemental video that you can watch while you go through the course content yourself. And before we get to the content, um, the house is a system of interdependent parts. You should inspect the house as a system where one part affects many other parts. And I found this to be true when inspecting the attic insulation and ventilation because you'll find that um, any inspection of the attic and insulation is inherently tied to other systems and components such as the roof framing, um, the chimney, the electrical system, um, energy efficiency. So um, when you go up in the attic, for example, um, the amount of insulation in the attic, observed in the attic, let's say um, on the attic floor, is tied to the heating and cooling system. Because if there's a lack of insulation, the heating system could not be, uh, maybe the occupants are complaining about the second floor being too cold in the wintertime because there's just a different climate zone on the second floor because of the lack of insulation. Um, and so the heating system will wear out sooner than later. So those two can be tied to each other. So two systems can be interrelated. Um, and it just happens to be that uh, the attic has a lot of good stuff um, that you can check, especially the electrical wiring. Electrical wiring can tell you a lot about the electrical panel downstairs. If the wiring in the attic is old, but the panel is brand new, um, with newer wiring, there's a bit of a renovation disconnect, right? Something has been renovated, um, and you should um, take a look for old components and new components. So it's kind of interesting to go up into the attic. But you have to enter the attic space or any unfinished space when you're looking for insulation, ventilation, um, only if it's safe to do so. And a lot of attics that you can crawl into have no platform, no walkway, no work area, no light. So they, they're dangerous. And you don't want to slip and fall through a ceiling. I have. It's not fun. So um, please take InterNACHI Safe Practices for Home Inspectors course and stay safe when entering these areas. According to the standards of practice, the inspector shall inspect the insulation in unfinished spaces, including attics, crawl spaces, and foundation areas. Again, be safe and decide whether or not to enter those spaces. The inspector shall inspect ventilation of unfinished spaces, including attics, crawl spaces, and foundation areas. And you're required to inspect mechanical exhaust systems in the kitchen, bathrooms, and laundry area. You are required as a home inspector to describe in your inspection report the type of insulation observed, the approximate average depth of insulation observed at the unfinished attic floor area or roof structure, and the inspector shall report as a need of correction the general absence of insulation or ventilation in unfinished spaces. Attic spaces. The inspection of unfinished spaces includes attic spaces. An attic is defined here as an unconditioned space between the roof and the ceiling or walls of the house's inhabited rooms. In houses with pitched roofs, attics are usually partially or fully accessible. Um, in houses with low sloped roofs, you can barely get into them or not into them at all. This inspection image is of an attic access panel in the ceiling of a bedroom closet. The attic access panel was not insulated at all. The inspector recommended that the panel be insulated and weather stripping installed to help with preventing energy loss. Ventilation. Signs of inadequate ventilation could be rusting nails, uh, wet or rotted roof sheathing, or excessive heat buildup in attics. Adequate ventilation can be measured by calculating the ratio of the free area of all vents to the floor area, but a home inspection does not include this type of measurement or calculation. Frankly, I just look for, on a pitched roof, soffit and ridge vents. That's the best. If there's some other kind of mechanical vent, I'll try to turn it on. If it doesn't turn on, defect. It'll be in a report. Ideally, 
soften and ridge is really the best for a pitched roof. The inspection image here is of fiberglass insulation on the attic floor area and other things. There was a lack of insulation installed with only several inches of thickness approximated by the home inspector. The inadequate insulation thickness was, was reported as a defect by the home inspector. The inspector also commented upon the observed defects at the insulated ducts. The ins insulation of the ducts were not installed properly at the connections, the ducts were damaged, and the duct was poorly supported, as you can see in that inspection image. A sprayed foam insulation was observed by this inspector at the band rim joist areas located above the basement foundation wall. There are types of insulation. Every homeowner should know the type and the amount of insulation materials installed in their house. And there are various types of insulation. The most common is fiberglass insulation. For cold climate zones, the insulation faced with a vapor barrier should be installed face side down with the vapor barrier closest to the conditioned space. Depth of insulation. Insulation levels are specified by R value. R value is a measure of the insulation's ability to resist heat flow. The higher the R value, the better the thermal performance of the insulation. A recommended level for cold climate attic floors could be R40, let's say, or about 13 to 14 inches, but it, it depends on the type of insulation and the climate zone. Home inspector is not required to determine the R value of the insulation observed. Here's an inspection image of blown in cellulose insulation, blown in installed over fiberglass bat insulation. At the eaves, there were baffles installed to help prevent insulation blocking the soffit vents. There was a ridge vent installed at the top of this sloped roof built with engineered trusses. And there wasn't a floor installed in the a floor installed in the attic space, so that was an inspection restriction. Whenever there's no flooring installed in an attic space, um, I document that with a picture and I make sure I disclaim my inspection because that is a major safety issue. Mechanical exhaust. There's an article about inspecting the bathroom exhaust, the dryer exhaust, and the kitchen exhaust. And we recommend going through those articles. Remember, this course is all about teaching you the standards of practice. It isn't a, uh, to teach you how to perform a home inspection. So go to those three articles about how to inspect the bathroom exhaust, the dryer exhaust, and the kitchen exhaust. Regardless of what kind of ventilation system may be installed for the rest of the house, exhaust fans are recommended in the bathrooms to remove excess moisture, cleaning, chemical fumes, etc. The fan should be ducted to the outside of the home. The clothes dryer must vent directly to the outdoors unless it is a ventless dryer equipped with a condensate drain and it has to be listed and labeled as a ductless condensing dryer. And regardless of what kind of ventilation system is installed for the rest of the house, an exhaust fan should be installed in the kitchen to exhaust moisture and odors associated with cooking. According to the standards of practice, the inspector is not required to enter the attic or any unfinished spaces that are not readily accessible or where entry could cause damage or, in the inspector's opinion, pose a safety hazard. You're not required to move, touch, or disturb insulation. You're not required to move, touch, or disturb vapor retarders. You're not required to break or otherwise damage the surface finish or weather seal on or around access panels and covers. You're not required to identify the composition or R value of insulation material. You're not required to activate thermostatically operated or controlled fans, ventilation fans. You're not required to determine the types of materials used in insulation uh, or wrapping of ducts, pipes, jackets, boilers, and wiring. And you're not required to determine the adequacy of ventilation. There are inaccessible areas. Whether by accident or by design, many attic spaces are not accessible for inspection. For example, in finished attics, there may be areas where there is no attic access at all. These should be reported as not accessible for your visual only inspection. There may also be situations when, despite the presence of hatches and access panels, 
you're, you won't be able to proceed with your inspection, such as when the attic is full of stored items, panels are sealed and decorated over, the access is too small for the inspector to get through, or the area has no available flooring for working or walking. The important issue here is to report how the area was inspected and what the limitations were. The inspector is not required to remove insulation or insulation components to evaluate systems as these are considered fixed materials. The insulation properties, the material type, and R value cannot always be accurately determined. And that is the section for attic insulation and ventilation. And there is a quiz right after. Enjoy the quiz.